I almost threw it in the garbage. Like I have my garbage. I will throw it basura, basura. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have my top 10 disappointing products of 2021 so far. So if you watched my last video, I did my best of beauty 2021 so far, and now I'm gonna be talking about all the products that kind of disappointed me throughout 2021. I did do a full face of them. It was very interesting because actually this looks really good right now. <laughs> With that being said, I can make these products work for me. It's just that I had higher hopes for them. Let's just say that, if that makes sense. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I do a ton of videos like this chatty ones i do a ton of product reviews i also do some colorful makeup looks which i'm kind of colorful today i have a purple in my lower lash line which is a little pop of color but pretty neutral because the palettes i'm going to be talking about are kind of neutral but if that sounds like something that you would enjoy i would love to have you as part of my fam and let's get into this video okay so like i said everything looks really good right now but i will explain why these are disappointing as we go along obviously i don't know i'm looking at my makeup and i'm like man that looks good. I'm gonna start it in the order that I no, I'm gonna do palettes at the end. I always do palettes at the end. I don't know what it is. I'll start with what did I do? I guess I'll start with the foundation <laughs> disappointment. Everyone's been talking about this foundation and their disappointing products of 2021. So I know I'm not alone when I say that the KVD Good Apple Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm was a disappointment. The only reason that this is a disappointment is because it doesn't wear well at all. Right now, my skin looks amazing. It covers everything. It looks like my redness. I have rosacea. It covers everything so nicely i have like i'm breaking out down here and you can't even tell everything looks really nice and especially on camera oh my gosh this is great for camera but but in a couple of hours i will look like an oily slash dry mess how is that even possible tell me how i promise you it's just flaking off but then in other places i look oily i kind of have combo skin sometimes but most of the time my skin is dry it's drier than the sahara desert this stuff is so weird i did a whole review on this by the way i'll have it open eye i saw somebody do a like they put like a dollar of this which by the way it's very very emollient they put like a dollop of this on a sheet of paper and they they just left it there and the oil that comes out of this is actually insane tell me how it makes my skin look super dry and flaky in a couple of hours tell me how but it also makes me look oily i don't know this stuff is so weird i do use this i make it work like i said if i'm not trying to make my makeup last like 12 hours then i will use this if i'm not trying to make my makeup last like four hours <laughs> then i'll use this after four hours i swear it just it just dies it looks horrible like horrible garbage no, I have the shade light 12. It works pretty well when I'm not self tan. I did have to blend it a little down my neck. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like white. I'm so white. I want to tan again before summer's over. You know how it is. Disappointing. I can make it work, but ugh, for the price, I just don't recommend this. I don't think it works for anybody. I've seen so many people, even people with oily skin. I have super dry skin. Like nobody really, really super enjoys this foundation. It's just not a good long lasting foundation. Another foundation that was a giant disappointment. I'll have my video of this up in the eye as well so you can watch that hot mess of a video this is the maybelline fit me tinted moisturizer i have the shade 118 this <laughs> this i almost threw it in the garbage like i have my uh, garbage i will throw it basura basura horrible why am i speaking spanish when i'm so passionate i start like going into the spanglish i had such high hopes for this i love the fit me line i even love the matte and poreless because it is matte and poreless and i have huge pores but i have dry skin and it works for me i also love the dewy one like i love them all they're great so i had high hopes for this this was Horrible. I keep it for the purposes of showing it in videos, but literally have not used it since that day because it's horrible. It doesn't cover anything. It does not even even out the skin tone because it's patchy as heck. Turns into this pillin mess. Look at that. Even that, you see how streaky that is? It doesn't even out anything. It's so patchy. And then you start blending it and blending it and blending it and it starts pilling up. I already feel it pilling up. It's gross. It's horrible. I tried different methods of doing it that day too. I even tried it with the brush. I tried it with the sponge. I tried patting it in with my fingers even just rubbing it in with my fingers the more you rub the worse it gets so i was like rubbing is not the key don't don't rub it don't rub it i have not seen a single person this worked for I, in fact it actually went viral on tiktok for doing the pill in thing that i'm talking about i tried it with a couple of other primers as well that same day i wiped it off and everything i just kept in that footage so you guys could see how like i just was not having luck with this and it was not working out for me it was horrible i did not like this this was actual basura something that's a little newer to me i just recently tried it out maybe in the last few weeks but slightly 
disappointed and I'm gonna lump these together maybe because they're kind of the same brand and the same concept situation. These are the e.l.f. putty products. This is the putty bronzer and the putty blush. Not my favorite formula at all. They're a little too thick for my liking. They just are really difficult to blend out and then they get patchy, especially the bronzer. If you see here, ignore my nail. I have to take off the rest of my nails and put on press-ons for a little bit. Especially over here, the more you blend, the patchier it gets and then if you don't blend, then it's just like a streak of brown on your face. I hate it. It just does not blend easily at all. This is, I think, the shade tan line. So that's another thing about the e.l.f. packaging. It doesn't tell you the shade that you get except for the box. So it's like, am I supposed to get a label maker or something to know what shade I have? I like to like let you guys know what shade I'm using, but I can't do that. I like the shade. It's pretty neutral. You can contour, you can bronze up the skin. I don't really care. Like it, it's a really nice shade. I just don't really like the formula of this. It's like a little too thick and it just doesn't blend out very easily. Same thing with the e.l.f. putty blush. It's the same situation. By the way, I have success with every other cream product. So it's not like I don't know what I'm doing with cream products. And I love using my Fenty 125 face brush for these products today. To make this work, I had to like interchange between my sponge and my brush to like make sure like it wasn't so streaky. And even still, it's a little patchy over there. Like it's so patchy. And then the blush got patchy over here. It just sucks. I think this might be meant for people with oilier skin. My dry skin does not like it. They just don't blend out very easily. I love the shade of blush too. It's so pretty. I don't even remember what it's called because again, it doesn't say the name on it. They're really disappointing. I have to work really hard to get them to work. So that's why they're in this video. They're not like the worst products in the world. Like I said, none of these are horrible. They're just not my favorite. I mean, the only thing that was actually horrible, horrible, like I can't even make this work is this. The Maybelline Fit Me Tinted Moisturizer. Horrible. Don't buy that. The rest of these you can make them work if you're really interested in them like I don't know I still wouldn't waste my money to be honest I, I still make them work because I like using products even if they don't work to see if my skill is high enough that I can make it work you know what I mean so I don't know if that makes any sense but whatever let's talk about a powder disappointment this is a major disappointment major major this is the tatcha the silk powder i had high hopes for this i love the liquid silk canvas i love the normal silk canvas i love the liquid silk canvas a little more it's a little more hydrating on my dry skin i know that this is a powder probably meant more for oily skin it makes me look like a little viejita my under eye wrinkles are horrible every time i use this like i use this today with a concealer that i love which i don't have a concealer disappointment i use the makeup revolution conceal and define concealer i love this concealer a lot really full coverage but it doesn't accentuate anything and covers everything but once i put this powder on like, you could see, look, you could see all my wrinkles here. This makes everything look so much worse. What did I do? <laughs> I also found today, and you'll see in the demo, that when I used this, it looked really dark under my eyes. It says it's translucent, radiant translucent setting powder. I don't see any radiance, first of all. Secondly, it's it doesn't even look translucent when you're looking at it. It looks like it has like a little bit of a yellow undertone. It does seem like a little darker under my eyes. I don't know what it is. It like darkened everything up. I press it in under the eyes until it basically like absorbs into the skin. That's what I do with my favorite loose setting powder, which is the Fenty loose setting powder. And I like to also chisel out like under my contour down here to like make it more defined and I did that today and I mean down here I don't really see like patchiness or like or, like dry patches I mean it just it looks horrible under the eyes so I do like using this for under the contour because it doesn't emphasize anything any dry patches or anything so it's like doable in that way but this like no, I don't use it under the eyes. It's horrible. I don't recommend that at all. Next, I have a palette that I don't think launched this year, actually. I'm not 100% sure, but I did get sent this like a couple months ago. So I know it's like it came to me this year. This is from Morphe. This is the highlighter palette. I remember owning a highlighter palette when Morphe first launched. I'm sure I have it in my makeup and that's in storage. This formula is so weird. It emphasizes every single bit of my texture. I think this could have been such a fun palette had the formula been different. There's so much variety in color here that you can use for so many different skin tones so many fun like i love a purple hat like you might think this is crazy but i love that i love that but the formula is just so powdery and kind of like patchy as well and it just emphasizes every little thing i don't like this formula at all i don't reach for this at all i think i've maybe used this this might have been my third or fourth time using this palette today and i use this shade right here galactic and i just took that all over i don't know i just i, I I, on camera it doesn't look as bad because I ha I'm in front of studio lights. When I'm looking at myself in the mirror, my under eye looks horrible because of the touch of powder. And then my my highlight just doesn't look very good. So this was a major disappointment. Again, I don't know if I don't think this might be the same palette I have 
in storage. It might be, but I don't know. I think that's the only thing that I don't know for sure if it launched this year or not. The rest I know did launch this year. I have a lip product here that sadly was a little bit of a disappointment. Don't hate me, people. But this is the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is, what is it called? I don't even remember what it's called. Liquid lipstick. <laughs> it's just called liquid lipstick. I have the shade Nudie. I have another shade and I actually prefer that shade a lot more. Here's why this is in this video. I think that the formula is very inconsistent. Even though I only own two, I really do enjoy the other one a lot more than I enjoy this one. I forgot the name of the other one. It's a little bit more of a darker nude, obviously. This, and while it is a lighter shade, it's gonna be more difficult to formulate so it doesn't look like horrible. But I did use this today and you can see my butthole lips. I do have butt hole lips. They're so drying. This formula reminds me a lot of the original Kylie Cosmetics liquid lip formula, which I was never a huge fan of. I mean, <laughs> I pretended like I was because I wanted to kiss her ass. This is a little thicker than the Kylie Cosmetics liquid lipstick formula, but I think that's what makes it even more drying. Like It'll literally flake off in like an hour. I mean, what's great about this is that it, there's no transfer. Like literally no. Oh yeah, it did transfer a little bit. <laughs> So I can't even say there's no transfer. Whatever. I do really enjoy her lip liners. By the way, I used her lip liner. I think this is the shade Bourbon. Let me just double check. Yeah, this is Bourbon. I do love the lip liner formula. It is great. It's actually super creamy, but not ColourPop creamy. Not even Pat McGrath creamy. It's a little less creamy. So you can get like a really precise line, which I really, really like. I do like her lip... lip What's it called? Lip liner formula. <laughs> Why did I draw a blank? But this was just not a favorite of mine, that's for sure. It makes me sad though because I really wanted to love this, but no. I have a mascara. When I applied it today, I'm like, man, is this really my least favorite mascara of the year? But it is. It still is. This is the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash. This is the Lift and Define 5D Lash Extreme Dimension Mascara. I remember there being so much hype over this launch and I was like so excited to get it and they did send this over to me. I have never been a fan of Makeup Revolution mascaras. The other one I have is like the mascara, I think is what it's called, the mascara mascara and the wand is so fat that it reminds me of the better than sex mascara which every time i use that i'm like why did i ever love the better than sex mascara from Too faced but anyway here's why i don't like this one it is really wet it's a very very wet formula which means that if you're not careful like me i am a klutz it'll get everywhere before it dries down it gets everywhere i can't tell you how many times i have like gotten it on my face and i've had to wait till it dries and take a q-tip and take it off and that's really freaking annoying because i just want to go about my business i want to do something quick i just like a drier formula mascara i don't like it to be too dry there has to be a happy medium and this is just way too wet it transfers everywhere it looks great on the top though if you do do it right and you are careful and you don't get it on your face it looks amazing i love my top lashes with it i just don't like using this for bottom lashes either i will make this work like i do use this on my top lashes like i said but it just isn't my favorite formula at all i'm probably gonna use this up though i am because i don't like wasting product and mascara does expire so i'm gonna use this up today coincidentally i did not get it on my face <laughs> so lucky me but yeah, it's not my like least favorite product ever. It's just not a favorite. Okay, for palettes, I'm gonna talk about the one that I'm not wearing first. I do have a couple of palettes. We have the Pixie and Tina Young palette. I did try this out a couple weeks ago in my Testing the Drugstore makeup. I have used it a couple of times since then. And I tried to do a more neutral look. I tried using the golds. I did like a like a gold look. It's not the palette I'm wearing today. Although I probably could create this exact look with this palette actually, now that I think about it. The shimmers, look at that swatch. That's horrible. <laughs> It's just not a good formula. I, there's no like bam in your face metallic looking shimmers, which is what I look for. I did do like that teal look and my testing new drugstore makeup. It was just so patchy. This shade in particular was so patchy. There's just so powdery. It's almost too soft that it gets patchy. The mattes almost blend away into nothing. There's just not a lot of pigmentation with these shades at all. And I remember this blue, I put it on the lid and it just looked so patchy. Like you could see my eyelid under and I was wearing like uh, the P. Louise base because that's the base I use with all my eyeshadows. It just isn't a good formula. And Pixie is just way too expensive. I think this palette's like 18 or $20. And to me, I would not spend that money. This just was not for me. Honestly, I recommend the $3 e.l.f. Bite Size eyeshadow palettes more than I recommend this because they're $3, first of all, and the formula is just a lot better. Sadly, this is, might be a little... Actually, I don't think it's going to be controversial at all because I think a lot of people did not enjoy these palettes, but I have the Urban Decay Prince Collection palettes. They did send this over to me. I did do a whole dedicated review. I'm just putting this here because it was disappointing. 
as all. I really, really wanted something else for these palettes. This is what they look like. I used a mix of both today, actually. This is what this palette looks like. It doesn't even say the name. Anyway, this is the more gold tone. I used the obviously black, this brown. I just, okay, here's what I don't like about it. I think the color story is kind of boring. I love this shade over here though. It, it can be really pretty. It has like some gold shimmer, but it's kind of matte. It's like not a shimmery shade, if that makes sense. So you could probably use that in the crease. It looks really pretty. The mattes are so powdery. <laughs> actually, it really reminds me of the formulation of the Pixie palette. And you're paying a much prettier penny for this palette for less shades. I like the metallics. I think they're stunning. Like this gold, this gold, this deeper gold, and this bronze. Those are the three shades I used on my lid and they're stunning. They are not the most intense, amazing metallics I've ever used in my life, but they're not horrible and they're nowhere near the bad quality of Pixie. The mattes are so, they're so lackluster. The mattes just blend into nothing. You have no idea what it took to get this brown shade over here. Also, I wish it was a more of a warm tone brown, honestly, because I would like to create like more of a cohesive look just using this palette and i don't think you can do that you only have three options for mattes in here and it's just not a lot of options you know it just isn't my favorite formula the black i will say is nice and here's why it's not super pigmented so you don't have a hard time blending it out i didn't have a hard time blending out the black i had a hard time blending out this cool tone brown which i never usually do it took so much building up for that color to still peek through and it just every time i built up the color it would blend away it was Horrible. This palette I like a little bit more and only because of the color story. I used a mix of these two shades on my lower lash line, which I love. I love this shade. I love this shade. I love all the shimmers pretty much. This shade's more crumbly. It's like you have to like tap it in, but I don't mind doing that. I think that the formulation of these metallics are great. Normally, I don't love Urban Decay eyeshadows, by the way, and palettes that are not the naked palettes. I do like the naked palette formula. I do. I'm not sure why they don't use this, a similar formula in palettes like this. Overall, I'm just very disappointed in this collection or in these palettes. I like the rest of the collection actually. I just thought that would have done something a little bit different for prints. And I did say in my video that I'm not entirely comfortable with the situation as in why does Urban Decay feel the need to collaborate with somebody who has no say in their collaboration? If Prince was still alive, it would be a different story because he'd be like, oh yeah, no, let's do this, let's do that. And he could approve formulations. They did work with his estate, but to me that's not the same because you don't know deep down what the person would have wanted. It just feels weird to me. I really kind of wish that this was a fully purple like purple rain and this one was just more of a neutral you had some more matte options in here and just some gold some brown tone shimmers you know the color stories are weird the formulation's not great the metallics are the only thing that is that save these palettes and even still they're not the best metallics ever so it's just kind of disappointing you know there we have it these are all of my disappointing products of 2021 so far i'm excited to see if this list will change as in I'll, I'll add to it i hope i don't i don't like trying products that i don't like okay i don't enjoy it i want to love everything that i try because it, otherwise it's like what's the point let me know what is a really disappointing product that you tried this year because i would love to know and yeah that completes this video i really hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up it helps me out so so much please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in my next video Bye. But if that sounds like something that you, but if that sounds like something that you would enjoy, I would love for. If I'm not making, if I'm not trying to make, so.